Hello everybody, John Veeley here, and I've had an exceptionally nice day at the mailbox, and I thought I would share with you some of the interesting things that arrived. Now, the oversized flat top pencils have always been a real weakness of mine. Anytime I find a whole run of these, I've just got to pick them up if I can afford them. And fortunately, these lots all came to me fairly reasonably. Um, the first lot had just one piece in it. It's this one right here. And you can see up here in the top fine point that indicates this is made by maybe Todd and I got this one very cheap actually because I should have taken a video of it before I started working on it the clip was all rusty the top was all rusty and there was what looked like a chunk out of the out of the nose but uh, the nice part about these higher quality pieces is you can always lean kind of hard on them on a buffing wheel and that gets the uh, uglies right out. So that one turned out very nice. I'll probably get the rest of that buffing compound out before I put it next to the model hard rubber I have. And speaking of model hard rubber, this is, this one here looks a lot like this and it should because they were both made by maybe Todd. However, the clip on this model one, if you can see it, is marked Guild as opposed to Fine Point. And I read an article about this a while ago. The Guild Products Corporation uh, was an attempt of a bunch of stationers in the mid-Atlantic seaboard to take over the world and force manufacturers to only uh, use Guild names on their products. So they strong-armed maybe Todd and also Conklin into doing Guild-made things. I think those are the only two I'm aware of. But anyway, that's a nice, nice piece, good example, beautiful rubber. Um, and the third one that came in there is actually a duplicate for me, so anybody out there that needs a Craig, that was a Schaefer sub-brand, I think it actually runs this way. Uh, just a nice, clean example. Now, this is the third one that was in that group. Um, early repeating pencils are a real passion of mine, too. And this is a cell feed, you can see it marked on the back side right there. And it's an early, early, early clicker mechanism around 1920 or so. Uh, I didn't have one in gold filled trim, certainly not in this nice shape with the, with the model on it. So that was a real prize too. Uh, and then there's this third group here, five. I'm gonna start with the Junker. Uh, I don't know who made these. This one's unmarked like most of them are. Uh, the plating is so bad on the cap that it's silver, but eh, you know what? It's not bad looking and uh, kind of works if it holds the lead in, okay? Uh, this I've written a couple of articles on. It's marked Pierce. No connection to Pierce Arrow, but Pierce with an arrow running through the script on the clip. Kind of cool. The other one I have in, in orange, uh, it's actually a plated metal, is, uh, is a thin model. So this will complement that one pretty nicely. Not much uh, more to say about that other than it's kind of a cool clip. Let's see here. We'll do this one next. Marked standard. And it is fairly just a conventional little nose drive pencil. Um, a different color for me and kind of a nice little clip on that. This one... Uh, those of you who read my blog know all about my thing for the Rex Manufacturing Company. Um, what makes this one unusual, this one is marked Webster. Whoops. Yeah, I had it right the first time. There we go. Webster, uh, which was a Sears brand for a while. Um, at the time, though, this was a uh, trademark of the Rex Manufacturing Company. Uh, this one has the what I call the Four Horsemen patents on it. It has four patent dates up there from 1925 and 1926. So this is the latest incarnation. And what's really kind of unusual about it is this faceted barrel. Uh, you find these a lot of times on the earlier ones, the ones that are marked 1924 or just the 1925 versions. But you don't normally see these in a faceted barrel on something so late. Yeah, it's easy to interchange the parts. This whole top just kind of unscrews just like a a Parker Duofold pencil would, but um, I don't know why anybody would. I mean, parts are kind of scarce to find on these anyway, so, and I just really, that's a very nice, attractive, 
barrel. So uh, I saved the best for last. Um, this one, I'm just now getting uh, my auto point book into production. It'll be out on August, or August, October 25th. Um, and this one is kind of proof that uh, no book is complete because you never know what you're going to find. Uh, this is an oversized auto point. Dates to between 1926 and 1930. And what's really unusual about it is there is no clip. Usually these had those bolted on clips. There is no hole, no nothing for a clip. So this is truly a clipless model. And I probably drove the seller crazy asking questions. Are you sure there is no hole in the barrel? Uh, and there was, he said there wasn't and there wasn't. So I was very pleased. This one has the uh, script underline auto point imprint. That's gonna be kind of faint and hard to see on this. So, but anyway, that's that's a nice addition. I had uh, reported in the book that all of these had the ball clip rather than the spoon clip, and I did not report the possibility uh, that there were some with no clip because I didn't know such a thing existed. So, anyway, that's the the haul for the day. They all happened to arrive on the same day, which uh, tickled me quite a bit, and a nice group here to add to my collection. So, we will see you soon.